and a hearty welcome back to Solo Wargaming Presents and we are still on our mission one of Fields of Fire, the Trevier Offensive. This is turn three and I want to crack straight into it. There were little bits of errata, uh, particularly in my village here, which I kept messing up. Sometimes you go just completely blind to a particular card. And uh, my issues really started when I uh, forgot to mark uh, my units as exposed as they moved uh, into the cover there uh, from this card here. And I didn't do that. And also I miscounted. I had horrible maths up here where... <laughs> Uh, which has resulted in the unit there being pinned where it shouldn't have been. But in the spirit of plunging forward and playing the game, because we our core mechanics are absolutely intact, we're going to plow on. So the first thing I'm doing is drawing a card to see if there's a friendly HQ higher event. And no, there is not because we'd be looking for the radio icon, you see, and it isn't there. So there's no friendly higher HQ event. Now we'll draw to see uh, how many commands the CO gets. He'll pro Oh, I was about to say he'll probably get a one or a two. He's got a five. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the highest you can get. Minus one because he's green. So he's going for four. And in doing so, He's going to activate all three of the platoons, one, two, and three platoon HQs. They are still in communication. One platoon HQ is still in the staging area. Three platoon HQ is here, and two platoon HQ is here. So he's going to use three commands, which I'm just completing over here on the command display. He's going to use three commands to activate the three platoons and the fourth command to move up into the woods here under the cover but I'm just not going to increase the size of the stack with three platoon because as the rest of the uh, platoon commanders move forward he's going to need to stay in command and don't forget that follows the line of sight rules so basically if you just bear in mind that essentially it's adjacent card. That's the range of these radios, but they do follow the line of sight rules. So I've moved him up with his fourth and last command. So his activation is complete. And yes, we'll just put a exposed marker on him, upside down even, an exposed marker on him. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so he's moved forward. He's now into the woods. Let's draw commands for one platoon. Two minus one, so they're only going to get one. So one platoon is going to get one command, and they have one command saved. So one platoon, which is over in the staging area, down here, he ha now has two commands. I'm going to draw for two platoon HQ, which is here. Number of commands, three, minus one for being green. That's two. Ah, oh, I wanted more for that. So, okay, two platoon has two commands. And three platoon got the best draw. Four commands, there it is, minus one for being green. Three commands. Okay, so one platoon with his... Saved command from last time has two commands. He's going to order the artillery forward observer with his artillery net radio. Hope you can see that. He's going to order him forward into the village and he's going to instruct him to attempt to infiltrate into the village. Okay, so if he infiltrates into that cover, he doesn't have to be marked exposed. And for that, we're gonna attempt to draw 
two cards, one card, two card, and we're looking for the uh, sneaky beaky soldier silhouettes. No, no, ah, yes, infiltrate. That, those are the ones I mean, the sneaky beaky soldier silhouettes. He has now infiltrated into the card. So there he is. Just bear in mind that everybody there is under that cover. But I'm just not creating a stack, that's all, okay? Um, and he is not marked with an exposed marker because he successfully infiltrated the card. I should have thought of that last time when moving these guys forward. And a couple of friendly people pointed that out to me absolutely quite correctly. And you go, damn, nab it. Should have thought of that earlier. I didn't. It's not always successful. Now, for instance, if that hadn't have been successful, he would have still been able to move as normal and marked exposed. But we got the sneaky beaky icon and that's what we were looking for. So yes, at last we've now got our artillery observer undercover in the village. And you can see that ultimately what we want to try and do is bring down artillery onto that LMG position over there. Right, two platoon who have two orders to use. The first thing he's going to do is order his depleted squad here, which is uh, first squad, two platoon, to infiltrate. See how I'm using infiltrate now if I possibly can? <laughs> uh, into this next card, like so, into the hedgerow. So I'm going to plonk him there, draw two cards. Uh, okay, and we're looking for the sneaky beakies. No sneaky beaky. No sneaky beaky. They haven't done it. There is one more thing we could do. That is to try the exhort command. You could pick one more card to try and exhort your unit. Go on, do it again, try again. Which is the only time you can order the same unit to repeat the previous command. So brilliantly, the game does allow for that. What are you playing at, guys? Get your heads down. Get into that card, infiltrate it. So he's exhorting the unit to do that. And that means drawing one more card and using his second command. It's just that, I think it's important because obviously this is going to trigger a couple of things when that squad moves in. And if they end up exposed, they're going to be in a whole heap of trouble. So we're going to try it. We're going to draw that one more command to exhort that unit to try harder. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to reshuffle the deck. Just a second. Okay, and we're reshuffling the deck. We're going to draw that one more card. And we have the sneaky beakies. So that into the card without having to put an exposed marker on, they snuck in. However, that changes the map. This patrol have now spotted them immediately and they're gonna open fire. And that being said, that fire attracts immediate counter fire. These guys here, the Germans, this squad who are patrolling that area out in the open, uh, they are firing now with small arms and these guys that have just snuck through the hedgerow can now see them and they are replying. So we want a two way PDF like so. And our VOFs are small arms. So put one on here, VOF for small arms, which is plus zero. And a small arms VOF here. How is this going to pan out? We're firing from the hedgerow into the farm. We're not under cover, 
but we do have the cover of the Bocage itself, which is a plus two. These guys, they're not undercover. They are patrolling around the farm, so they're not undercover specifically, but they too have plus two cover from the farm, both putting small arms fire down. Now, that whole movement, because of the exhortation, if you like, took both commands of two platoon. So he has nothing to save. We're getting thin on the ground here. Because we're having to do a lot of things, and this is how it sort of uh, reflects combat quite well. The more we're trying to do, the less time, because there are so many events happening, we have for forward planning. However, I wanted that to happen because I needed to draw fire from that squad there. And we've done it because it's now the turn of three platoon. And what three platoon commander is doing, and I've just taken time to prepare it. I've just taken these uh, counters out of the stack. He's going to instruct the third squad with their rifle grenade. There they are, third squad with their rifle grenade to move forward to infiltrate into cover here. Let's see if they can do it. That was using one command. We've drawn the two cards for infiltration. We're going to see if we can find a sneaky beaky. We don't. Uh, do we exhort that unit to try? Uh, yes, we do. One more go. Come on, guys. Get your heads down. Murphy, lower your backside. Crawl through that hedge. And it still doesn't work. <laughs> and yet we tried another command. Oh no, okay, he's got one command left. Uh, we can't try that again. So those guys have moved in and they've moved into cover. I won't put the cover marker on them, but they are exposed. Now immediately they're gonna open fire. Now they have so many choices in front of them. Look, they have a squad there patrolling, they have an LMG unit undercover here. They have an, an HMG unit undercover there. Now, you fire in priority order. And this is gaming it a little bit. But the first thing we, we look at is they would fire on the unit that is projecting, that is firing the highest volume of fire. And I, and I, and I get it. They probably would. Now, the highest volume of fire is the LMG is projecting all pinned. The HMG is projecting all pinned. If they weren't, then one of these would be the highest volume of fire and, and we would then go to a random draw. But because they are projecting all pinned, it's these guys that have just opened fire with small arms that are actually, at this moment anyway, projecting the highest volume of fire. So they too lay small arms fire down on that target there. But there's the small arms fire VOF already on it, so we don't lay another one, they don't stack. And it'd be pointless anyway, because it's a plus zero. So you see that plus zero still stays there and takes effect, despite the fact now that these guys are now also, and by the way, we put a one-way PDF marker onto that card, like so. Yeah, because these guys are not firing back. Their attention is completely taken by this unit whom they're already engaged with here. But because we now have PDF from two different directions, that car, that, that exposed squad, is now under crossfire. You see? With a minus one. 
So maybe it is worth it. Fire coming from two directions, the game can account for that. That unit's on the crossfire, and that does stack. So the crossfire marker goes on there, minus one. You see, <laughs> you might get pinned. You might come under fire as you move into a car. Of course you do. These guys are bricking it. It's dangerous moving forward, and they have to keep pushing forward. That infantry, only infantry can take ground. So once you have contact, you then devise a plan to neutralize that enemy. And this is what we're trying to do here now. So third squad move forward with their rifle grenade and they've opened fire, causing a crossfire on that enemy patrol. Okay, our platoon HQ initiative next. There is none because they were all activated. This guy here, three platoon, he is going to save his one remaining command. The CO staff, that is the uh, company sergeant and the company XO, they get an automatic one command each, which puts the XO at three commands, and he's going to save them all. He's still down here with the HMG team. The company sergeant is going to use his one command and he's going to instruct the mortar team. There they are. Well, it's not a team, it's a section. The mortar section. To move into the orchard. And let's keep it correct, although they're not in any specific danger right now, they are exposed. So the company first sergeant has used his one command. The reason he did that, and I wish I'd thought of this in turn two, the mortars can't fire out of the woods because of all the branches of the trees, the canopy. But they can out of an orchard. So I've moved them laterally. We are going to need those mortars. So now it's the general initiative draw. <laughs> oh, gosh. There are firefights going down all over the place now. Um, which is a tremendous feeling. Um, this is where the game comes into its own. As you've seen, the kind of things it, it allows for, the infiltration, the crossfire, choosing a target, it all makes sense. It's just a case of going through it slowly. Think, 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 as you would on the ground. General initiative draw, let's hope for something huge. Da -da. Okay, it's not huge. <laughs> general initiative is two. And that's the general initiative is the one command phase that is not modified. So that remains a two. So we've got two units here that could make their own decision. Okay. This squad here that have just dived into this cover. are going to use their one-shot rifle grenade into an adjacent card. Squads can use grenade attacks within their own card or rifle grenade to an adjacent card. And this is what we're going to try with the first initiative command. Now, the rifle grenade has a G with an exclamation mark, grenade attack. So to make a successful grenade attack, we draw, just one second, is it two? Is it two? Is it two? Is it two? Checking all the commands here. Look, you have all your commands set out. Command and control, movement, rally, combat actions, command limitations. Command draw modifiers. Yes, we have all that. So, uh, combat action it must be. Attempt to make a grenade attack. Costs the one initiative command. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Two unit, uh, two, two draws, two cards. We draw one card. 
suit card. Nothing, but we got another sneaky beaky look. Ah, yes, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the grenade. It's a successful grenade attack. Yes! <laughs> okay. Oh, stay calm, stay calm. So, we need our grenade icon. There he is. Oh, there he is. Grenade, and we're using the minus four. Minus four. Come on. And we're targeting this unit in the farm here. Now then, I think I'm just going to zoom in here. Okay, is that a teensy bit better? Okay. Situation, enemy forces. <laughs> right, we have this squad who are patrolling in the farm. They came under fire. No, well, no, actually, they opened fire immediately onto our unit that infiltrated into this card. They were seen, they're in range. Our unit immediately opened fire back, which is why we've got this two-way PDF. But the volume of fire is small arms. Both ways. We then had third squad, again, small arms, move into the hedgerow here. And from the hedgerow, they immediately chose to open fire on the patrol in the farm. Also putting down a VOF of small arms, which is a zero. VOFs in the main do not stack. So it remained just one VOF. However, we created a crossfire. There's the crossfire to give us minus one. Boom. We just tossed a rifle grenade which was successful, and we now have a minus four kaboom amongst that patrolling squad. Grenades do not stack with existing VOFs. For instance, small arms, automatic fire, heavy weapons fire, but they do stack with crossfire or concentrated fire, that kind of thing. So now we have a minus four, minus five, on that unit. And this is how we've slowly built up our attack. We've thought our way through, we've kept pressing forward, which is always exposing us to great danger, but we've made a successful grenade. That I can't wait now to see the outcome when we get to the actual fire resolution phase. It's gonna be brilliant. Okay, for our next general initiative, and our last general initiative, it has to be the artillery forward observer. Do you reckon? I think so. He infiltrated the card, so he can carry out a command because uh, he's not underexposed or anything like that. So if we just look at my squad roster, where I'm keeping record, and when we set up the game, we had the forward observer. Now, he's able to call on 105 millimeter ammo High explosive. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, there he is. He'll draw two cards. By the way, I should have been informing you really, but I'm sort of been taking it for granted. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm marking off the turns. We've already had two turns. Look, uh, what else am I doing? I'm marking off LMG ammunition that we've used. We've now got three rounds of firing left. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. On the flip side, uh, on the flip side, I'm marking down the German ammunition used, the LMG and the HMG, like so. So we can call that, or rather the artillery forward observer can, can use two card draws to see if we get a successful fire mission. And obviously, it's a fire mission on this unit here. So we draw two cards. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And we're looking for... <laughs> I hate this. We're looking for a burst icon. Let's go. No burst icon. <laughs> oh, you know it's going to be, don't you? 
And no burst icon, it hasn't happened. Oh dear. It hasn't happened, so we don't mark off a fire mission because no ammunition has been used. Instead, he radioed battalion. Okay, that's what he did. Now, either he couldn't get through, he wasn't getting any answers, or, and probably more likely, the 105 battery was engaged elsewhere. Fire missions are strictly rationed. And that's what happened. This turn, we could not get a fire mission down on that card. Okay, potential contacts. We had this uh, squad of, it was first squad, wasn't it, of second platoon, moving to the hedgerow as a potential contact there. No, 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 no. Please, no. That's what we don't need right now. We'll remind ourselves with our handy little aid cards here. Uh, it's an A contact. It's engaged. Five cards. <laughs> no. You just know there's going to be more enemy contact as we approach our objective. Boom, 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 boom. There's such a lot going on. This is why things get, get forgotten in your game. Even when you're in the quiet and you're playing solo and you're taking your time, you will forget certain rules. Don't worry about it. Use the main mechanics, which is exactly what we're doing. Play the game, keep going. And if you're talking 10 to the dozen like me and trying to think of what to say and getting way overexcited, <laughs> then we are gonna miss some rules. I, I hope not. I, I hope we catch them if we do and uh, alternatively, we have really great people who just pointed out to me kindly, and that's absolutely fine. Five cards then for contact. Ein, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Okay, five cards. We're looking for the word contact. We don't want the word, word contact. We'll almost certainly get the word contact. Come on, they're in the hedgerow. <laughs> what have we tripped now? Oh, there's the burst icon that we wanted before for our artillery. Contact! Uh, oh, and there was only one in the five, but we got it anyway. It's contact. So we send a quick message, contact, wait out. What kind of contact is it? Let's have a look. Back to our scenario book. Potential contact A, so we're rolling on a 10. So let's roll a D10, we're rolling on the 10, and we have, we're looking at the 10, look at all, ah, oh, the whole card is ones. 10 is a one. And if memory, sir, I think that's a sniper. I think that's a sniper. I think it's a sniper. Potential contact A, one, is number four, Sniper. So, number four, Sniper. Place a PDF. Uh, yeah, because he's going to open fire. Is he spotted? No. We'll see where the placement is by looking at our scenario card. Sniper undercover. Where are we going to place him? We draw on a 10, oh, a 10. It's a 10 on the 10. There it is. And unit placement is 10 right front at max line of sight. So right front and max line of sight, that's right front from here. So front right is here. It can't be here because he wouldn't be able to see through this card and he wouldn't fire through a friendly card. So it would have to be here, but we already have enemy forces on that card. It's no good drawing for another location because that's what you would do. If it doesn't fit, you have to keep drawing until you find a valid location. We won't do that because 
all of the options, if you like, are taken because of other enemy forces, except the left front. So I'm going to shortcut this and I'm going to increase the map size to the left front and draw another card straight off the top of the terrain deck. And it's Hedgerow Bocage. I'll just adjust the map. So there it is. We've drawn another Hedgerow Bocage. So he's firing down here. That has to be max line of sight because it has green corners. So he has to be there. We're told he's under cover. Let's have a look at him. There's the sniper look. Okay, there's a sniper. He's under cover of trenches because that's the default. If it doesn't say foxholes or anything like that, then the scenario says it's under trenches. It's going to give him plus two cover, which is nasty. So the sniper goes in there. I'll put the question mark on him because we can't see him. There's his PDF into our card. But we can't fire back because we haven't spotted him. And he lays a, a special VOF. As you can see that. Sniper VOF. Onto our card like so. Whoa! Now, I've just taken a pause. And as you can see, he stood back from the table, so I'm showing the whole table. And the last thing we did was we checked this potential contact here and we spawned a sniper in trenches over here, not spotted. That's all well and good. But something I forgot was the enemy activity check. Didn't I? I should have done that just before this. No. Okay. But we can still do it, so we'll get it done now. So if I draw a card for enemy higher HQ, there's no radio on there, so there's no enemy higher HQ event. Okay, so now it's the enemy activity check. What are these units, these enemy units on the board? They're far from inanimate. Are they going to react in any way than just keep firing? Let's go closer in and do that check. So enemy activity check. Uh, we'll number the enemy. We'll number them one, two, three, and this one at the back here, number four. Won't include the sniper because we've done this out of sync. In other words, he shouldn't have spawned yet. So we're just going to ignore him for now. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. We'll draw a card. And on a four, we've got number three. So one, two, three. It's this guy first. Now he's pinned. He's pinned under cover. So we use the chart for pinned units, which is here. And we start going down, pinned, not undercover, pinned undercover on a US card, no, pinned, not undercover. Pinned undercover is the first option. And we always stop at the first option, okay? And look, we're rolling on a D4. So we're rolling a D4 to see what they're going to do. Da, da, da. D4 is three. I don't know if you can see that. D4 is three. See, this is quite easy. So uh, where are we? Pinned on the cover. D4 is three. Three and four is rally. And it's not automatic. It's only automatic if they've got a leader with them. Leader on card. So rally, they've got to try and rally. And for that, we draw two cards. One. Two. Are they going to rally these Germans, that HMG unit? Let's have a look. We're looking for the word rally. And it's not there. They haven't rallied. Well, that'll suit me. So now we'll go one, 
two, three over the back there. Draw a card, we're rolling a D3. D3 is three. So it's our guy at the back there. Now he's not pinned. He's not pinned, so we do it on the regular enemy defensive activity hierarchy table. And again, we're going down, uh, deliberate tactics, we're going down on the same card as a US unit, no. On a US unit, no. Uh, it doesn't have automatic or grenade or H and he's out of ammo, no, not under fire and no line of sight to a US unit. We know it's not under fire, can't see, can't see, that's the one, not under fire and no line of sight to a US unit automatically remove the unit and place a PC marker. Wow. We won't place a PC marker because that's outside of our tactical area of responsibility anyway, of our limit of exploitation. But what we can do is remove the unit. They fell back last turn. This is amazing. They fell back last turn and they've disappeared off the map to where we don't know, to what purpose we don't know. But they've gone off the map. Wow. Hey, my narrative could be that they fell back and they've come around and it's them that entered the farm to patrol the farm. Hey, that'll do for me. You never know what's going to happen here. Okay, we got number one and number two. We're rolling on a D2. There it is, and it's number two. <laughs> and it's number two. So, again, now, he's not pinned. So, defensive, deliberate tactics, no US units, no. Ooh, he is under fire. Not under fire, but has, you know, under fire, but not under cover. We have to stop at the first one. Under fire, but not under cover. We are rolling on a D3. Okay, we're rolling on a D3. Da, da, da. D3 is a one. Let's have a look. D3 is a one attempt to seek cover. One to two out of three, look. Attempt to seek cover. That's good. Okay, they're going to attempt to seek cover. That makes so much sense. They're going to draw, look at that, three cards. One, two, three. Have they found cover? Contact, rally. No, they haven't found cover. Okay, and the last one is this guy. He is pinned. That's the LMG unit, isn't it? Yeah, that's the LMG unit. So we come down here, he's pinned, he's undercover. We're rolling on four again, a D4. We roll the D4 and it's a four. Can you remember what that is? I can't. So it's a four. Rolling on D4. Uh, where are we? Pinned undercover. Four. Four back. Ouch. Okay. Now his first choice then is to fall back directly. Wow. Okay. So to fall back directly, would he be out of sight? Yes, he would. Uh, yes, he would. So let's draw the card. Village, look at that. Look and, and see how different, see how different that picture is there of my other village, which is down here. This is the great thing about this, these, um, these cards. Okay. So there's the village, 
Well, actually, if I just move our limit of exploitation a little bit, like so, he's falling directly back one card, like so. Oh, he's left the trenches. He's fallen back and he's exposed. So the Germans are falling back. So if we just look down here a little bit, that means the VOF comes off of this card, okay? Because they're no longer putting down that fire. Now, this is another excellent rule. Our VOF here stays. They don't know that the Germans are pulled back. And this is another thing about fields of fire that players either love it or hate it. That's realistic. You've been putting down fire and you're still putting down fire. As far as you know, there's still enemy there. We'll see what happens a little bit later. But there we go. They've fallen back to a place where they're not under fire and they're out of sight of US units. Because I was thinking of this one here, but fine, he can see there, but he can't see then beyond into that card. So that's where he's fallen back to. We'll put our, our limit of advance back on like so, although we know that it's there anyway. And that's it, that's the section we missed. Okay, so let's resolve these firefights. Uh, one doesn't affect the other, so you can do them in any order actually, uh, as I have been doing. So I'm gonna do the simplest one first, which is our firefight here. We are still putting fire down into these hedgerows here, onto these trenches, because we've no idea that the enemy is actually bugged out. So that's having no effect. And there's obviously no fire now coming down here. Now, the effect of that will be that at the end of this turn, we'll remove our pinned marker. I'm going to do it now because because I'll probably forget. <laughs> but effectively for this round, I'm still pinned, but I'm taking it off now because at the end of the round, I'll no longer be pinned. So that's that one complete. Now, there's this one here, this old firefight still going on from this mounted machine gun here through the open fields into the edge of the woods where we have this squad. Okay, so let's do the German side first. They're firing down here with an all pinned VOF, because they're pinned. So it's not all that effective fire, but let's see what happens. So we've got plus two for cover, plus two for the ineffective fire, so that's plus four. Let's take a look. Plus four is a miss. These guys, are living a charmed life. They're firing back with small arms fire, which is plus zero, through the green edge of this card. So these guys have got plus two and plus one, because that pin says so plus three. So now we're drawing. <laughs> oh, can we still keep their heads down? Okay, because that's the most I can wish for, I think, just to keep them pinned. But uh, maybe not. So it's plus three, let's have a look. And it's a miss, it's a miss folks, okay. So we're not making any headway there. So because we've missed, their pinned marker comes off. So they'll be no longer pinned, um, which means we'll swap this over next turn. The all pinned marker gets turned over. Oh, sorry, don't need that one. What we need is, a VOF of automatic weapons, minus one. Now, as we know, that could make a big difference. Plus two, now it's changed to minus one. That's a big margin. So they'll probably get a result there next turn, I think. But the result is they're now no longer pinned. Okay, okay. We've got a firefight going on here. I think we should zoom a bit closer into that. And how's that? Are we okay? 
I think we're okay. Now, <laughs> first of all, I want to do the US fire onto this card simply because uh, I'm a child and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. <laughs> probably nothing. They're probably gonna get an amazingly lucky draw, but let's have a go anyway. So look, between us, we're putting down a volume of fire of small arms, which is plus zero. Okay, so let's forget about that. But because it's between us, two different directions, we've got a crossfire. So we've already got a minus one. And we've got a minus four for that grenade, which is just about now ready to go off. Kaboom! Minus five. So they've got a plus two. So they're on plus two, minus five. It's not my fault they didn't find cover. Plus two, minus five, <laughs> is minus three. Agreed? Minus three. Let's take a look. Oh, come on, give us something, kaboom. Oh, reshuffle the deck, okay. We'll do dudes, we'll do. And a reshuffle deck. So, where were we? Minus three. Pin. Ah, oh, after all that. It's pin. Minus three is pin. Okay. So they're pinned. Uh, that's not going to be effective now, of course. Um, but next turn it will be. Um, I'll put the change their VOF here from zero to all pinned. Although I should really do that at the end. Okay. Sniper. Now, by the way, there's something I forgot with Sniper. Because there's a PDF coming from two directions, just like here, from ourselves, it's still, there's a PDF from two different directions. It means there's also a crossfire marker on there in the favor of the Germans. Now then, uh, where are we? I'm going to turn that back, otherwise it's going to confuse me. So, at the moment then, let's concentrate on the sniper. The sniper will target one unit randomly on the card. So if there was more than one unit here, I would number them, as you've seen me do with various other things, draw a card, you know, roll that number of D, and see which one gets affected. But there's only one. So that sniper VOF is a minus three. Yes! It's that powerful. That sniper is a minus three. Bang! And that's what he's gonna get. So we're drawing to resolve this sniper marker, which is minus three, on our squad there. Let's take a look. Powerful, it's a hit. Minus three is a hit. Uh, to line, CC, casualty, casualty. So, he comes off. He's been badly hit. Casualty for the first step and casualty for the second step. Replaced by two casualty markers. This couldn't be worse. Our first real kills. There they are. Wow, that was powerful. There's now no point actually in carrying out the fire from the farm onto this card because we can't get worse than casualty, casualty. Time to tidy up. And here we are, I've taken off all the exposed markers uh, and the one from up there as well. I've changed some of this here, whereby taking the grenade marker off, there's no longer fire going into this card from this direction. So the crossfire marker has also come off. So it's just VOF small arms from this unit here. Retained for now, the two PDF markers going into this card and the crossfire marker. Change that one to all pinned because of 
that location. Actually, I've just realized that shouldn't be the case because we also have to count this as small arms fire coming in here. So then it's not all pinned, actually. It's more accurately, the card is under small arms fire. We've still got fire going down range here at the unit that fell back, but nothing coming back this way. So actually, I've just got to change that one and we'll see what we do about that in the next turn. What a turn! How much more can possibly happen in one turn? I'll tell you what, what I've really missed uh, and what I'm amazed by, I've not had any enemy artillery or mortar fire, particularly in this first row. You often start off your game in this first row with the uh, C-rated potential contacts. You often start off with mortar fire or artillery fire and that kind. We've not had any of that, so that's amazed me. And that we've had a fall back a, twice now, is it twice? For a German unit. We've got a lot more to do. We need to get some more support up here. We need to try and bring our artillery and our mortars into play. And we will. And that's going to be for turn four. I've loved this particular turn. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Thanks ever so much for watching and join us again for turn four. Bye-bye. Thank you.